Good afternoon, Redeemer family and everybody joining us on the internet around the world. Our devotion for this afternoon is based on our Old Testament reading for the fourth Sunday after the Epiphany of our Lord. The Old Testament reading is Micah chapter 6, verses 1 to 8. Micah chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. Hear what the Lord says. Arise, plead your case before the mountains, and let the hills hear your voice. Hear, you mountains, the indictment of the Lord, and you enduring foundations of the earth, for the Lord has an indictment against his people, and he will contend with Israel. O oh, my people, what have I done to you? How have I wearied you? Answer me, for I brought you up from the land of Egypt, and redeemed you from the house of slavery. And I sent before you Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. O my people, remember what Balak, king of Moab, devised, and what Balaam, the son of Beor, answered him, and what happened from Shidom to Gilgal, that you may know the saving acts of the Lord. With what shall I come before the Lord, and bow myself before God on high, Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams and with ten thousand rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? But to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. <clears throat> As Micah writes, you know, we can imagine, especially in regard to the first portion, of how many times we've thought to ourselves, boy, how ungrateful when we've done something um, that we thought was generous, kind, loving, gracious for someone else, and, and then they mistreat us, they abuse us, or downright uh, betray us. And, and this is how God was feeling. And that's why he says when he says in verse 2, Hear, you mountains, the indictment of the Lord, meaning accusation and condemnation. And you enduring foundations of the earth, for the Lord has an indictment against his people, and he will contend with Israel. He's got a bone to pick and a justified one. Because God had been kind and gracious, loving and saving to his people, and they were ungrateful. And we hear what God says, and he points out the things that he had done for them. As he asks the question, Oh, my people, what have I done to you? And how have I wearied you? Answer me. For I brought you up from the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of slavery. I sent before you Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. Oh, my people, remember what Balak, king of Moab, devised, what Balaam, the son of Beor, answered him. And what happened from Shidom to Gilgal, that you may know the saving acts of the Lord. See, in the time of Moses, over and over and over and over again, God had come to the aid of his people. He delivered them. He provided for them. He freed them from slavery. He gave them food, and he provided for them water and if that wasn't enough, God continued to protect them from enemies, continue to deliver them from those who would harm them. God continued to watch over them. And yet, it didn't change their minds, their attitudes, or their actions. They were ungrateful. They could have cared less. They continued to go their own path and sin against God. And it's not like God was saying, okay, these are the things that you have to do to pay for your sins. They were more concerned about giving their sacrifices and thinking, okay, that should be good enough now. 
then about the attitude of the heart. And that was the big problem. The big problem was they thought they could buy their way out of their sin and walk away thinking, oh, what a good little boy am I, rather than knowing that God could see into their hearts and minds. And isn't it the same for us? All too frequently we think, okay, I gave my offering, I showed up at church, isn't that enough? Shouldn't that be enough? You know, what does he expect? But God wants the attitude of the heart, the attitude of the mind, the attitude of the soul to turn to him. And here's what he calls us. And he says, he has told you, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. See, God is after that different attitude. God wants us to think less about ourselves and more about others, less about what's in it for us, and more about how we can care for, love, serve, and bless others. That's what he's calling on us. That shows our gratitude, our thankfulness to God for every good gift that he pours into our lives, that we would respond in kind, that we would respond out of love toward him by showing love and kindness and mercy toward others. That's what he's calling us to. See, we receive the greatest gift of all. God indeed gave the firstborn, so to speak, the only begotten Son of God. He gave for the redemption of our souls to forgive our sins. He gave Jesus over to death on the cross to redeem us and to give us forgiveness and life. And how do we respond to that? How do we show our attitude of gratitude? How do we show our thankfulness? How do we respond in kind? He's not looking for sacrifice. He's not looking for offering. He's not looking for all of these things. He's not looking for us to be self-righteous and say to us, or have us say to ourselves, oh, what a good little person am I. But to be truly grateful by showing love, by doing the three things that he says through the prophet Micah, to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with our God. That is true gratitude. That is true thankfulness. That is true attitude of the heart that is pleasing to God. In Jesus' name, amen. Please pray with me. Dear Lord Jesus, far too often we get into a mode of, if I do this, this, and this, that's enough. I've paid my dues. I've given my gift. That should be enough. But we pray that you would remind us that it's not about the things that we do or the actions we take. It's about the attitude that we have as we do them. The attitude toward you, the attitude toward one another. To be truly grateful for everything that you've given. To have an attitude of the heart that has everything to do with serving. Everything to do with loving. As we have been served, as we have been loved. For you gave us the gift of salvation. Out of gratitude toward you, may we give of ourselves in kindness, mercy, and Christian love. In your name, amen. Have a blessed Tuesday, all, and I pray the Lord is uh, being with you today, guiding and strengthening and comforting, and we will see you tomorrow for Wednesday's devotion. Have a beautiful Tuesday.